Okay. All right. So for the juniors, uh, this is obviously a very important year. We're asking students to do research on colleges and maybe even research some um, careers that they may be interested in. So one of the important things that we want parents to do is sit down with their um, students, their children, and kind of have the conversation of the different colleges um, they may be applying to down the road. So we want to make sure that you understand that there, there are um, thousands and thousands of colleges across the United States, and there's always a fit for somebody. And we want students to find a place that they're most comfortable, that they um, would enjoy the next four years of their lives. So this is a good tool, what Naviance is a good, good tool for you to get started on that. So when students first um, log into Naviance, this is the page that they see, this is the home page. They have a letter that is generated by Naviance. It kind of, you know, um, welcomes them to, you know, their class of 2024. I'm gonna focus on several um, important links and the tab that I'm gonna be focusing on the most is the college tab, because there are so many different things under the college tab that I think is very important for you to sit down with your child and just kind of go through it and um, you know, investigate and research together. So on the homepage, you have what is called my favorites. You have colleges and there's a, uh, a, a link that says, I'm, you know, colleges I'm thinking about. And this is where students are gonna add colleges that they are considering, but necessarily not applying to as since they are juniors, they're not gonna be applying to these colleges just yet. However, um, it's always good to just kind of do the homework early. So if you, um, let's see. So I created a, uh, a dummy account. And so I listed some colleges here. So I don't know if you saw, I clicked on uh, colleges that I'm thinking about and it takes me to this page. So I've already listed some schools here. I have University of Alabama, Boston University, uh, Cal Poly Pomona, Long, Cal State Long Beach, several others. So this is a good page to kind of look at um, because you're gonna be adding colleges on here. So parents have limited, limited access to what they can do on Naviance. So that's why we encourage the parents to sit down with their students to work on this together. So what you can do as a parent and what students can do is if you wanted to add a college, you just click on the plus sign here and look for a school. We have what we call a quick list. And the quick list really are just the common schools that a lot of our students apply to. So you have things, you know, Cal Poly Mabona, Long Beach, uh, Cal State LA, Berkeley. These are the very common schools that our students apply to. So what you can do is you can click on one of these schools, add it in. Let's say you want, you're thinking about Glendale Community College. You can click on that and then um, add it as your favorite and you know, add it onto your list of schools. Um, I don't know if you can see that. There it goes. So the other good thing about this particular page is it gives you the different deadlines of when the schools are um, accepting the application. But more importantly, I want you to look at the more section. If there's a little carrot, I don't know if you can see that, but if you click on the more section, there's what we call a scattergram. And the scattergram is a, uh, a graph of all the students who've applied to this particular school with their GPA and their SAT, ACT score. And it shows you, um, in terms of comparison to your student, where the student falls. So for instance, let's look at, um, oops, get back there. Let's look at um, Cal Poly Pomona. So I'm gonna look at the scattergram here. It takes a little while to load. So it gives you information on the top about Cal Poly Pomona. The deadline is November 30th. The application fee is $70. 
and the acceptance rate is 55%. So they accept about 55% of students who meet their criteria. So if you scroll down, you can see in 2022, which is just last year, 58 students apply to um, Cal Poly Pomona, 28 of them were accepted and only five enroll. And this goes back all the way until 2009. That's when we first started with Navions. So you can see the acceptance history, the uh, people who, um, the number of students apply and the acceptance rate, obviously. And then if you look on the bottom, this is what we call a scattergram. All the check marks, all the greens, show the students who've been accepted to the school. And you can see there's that average or rough average of maybe a 3.5 GPA. And if you sc scroll down a little bit more, uh, the approximate SAT score would be around uh, a little over 1300. And you do have students who end up falling below the average um, average rate, but they were still accepted for various reasons. They could have been an athlete or maybe there was something really special about them or they were applying under a major that wasn't heavily impacted. So unfortunately, um, it has all the people from 20 or 2009 all the way up until 2022. It doesn't separate it by year. So that's why you see a lot of marks on here. But if you, like I said, if you look on the upper part, you can see in terms of the acceptance rates, but this doesn't give you the, um, the GPA or the SAT scores. So if you uh, put your cursor on one of the arrows, you can see that this person was accepted who had a five, uh, 1500 GP, uh, 1500 SAT and probably a 3.0 GPA. Uh, and this person got a 1400 on their SAT and got, uh, was it GPA was a 2.94 and they were still accepted into the school. And then you have someone whose um, test score was 1170 and the GPA was a little bit lower. Now, please understand too, we don't know when these students were admitted because it doesn't have the date of admit. Uh, of when they were admitted. This could have been back in 2009, 2010, when the colleges weren't as impacted as they are now. Um, but this is a good way of choosing colleges to see if, well, you know, do I fit their criteria? How, where am I? How do I rate in that particular, at that particular school? And this just kind of gives you the legend of what the, um, the marks mean. And then if you scroll down some more, it gives you more information about the school as a freshman transfer. Now it does say require ACT, SAT. However, um, the last two to three years, our student, the um, colleges have gone test optional. So they still left this here. Uh, in terms of the junior class, we haven't heard anything from the colleges to see whether they are going to be test optional or not. So I would probably suggest and encourage the um, juniors and which we tell them this all the time um, before the pandemic and before you know the, the test optional is to take a at least one of your um, whether it's ACT or SAT in the spring of your junior year. And that way, if you, if you um, did well, then maybe you don't wanna take the test again, or maybe you think that you can improve, then you have the whole summer to practice and take the test in the fall. The last test for um, the juniors to take, I'm sorry, for the seniors, when the juniors become seniors, is the one that's offered in December of their senior year. Colleges will not accept any test scores after, or the last test is, would, be the, would be the December one, but they won't accept any tests after that. Um, they do recommend campus visits and these are optional. Cal States and UCs do not uh, require letters of recommendation, only the private independent colleges do. And I'm, kinda, I'm gonna leave that as that because in the senior year, there is gonna be another Navion's presentation and I don't, I don't wanna take the um, thunder away from, from the senior presentation. Um, so 
these are just the required courses. And again, you know, just information about that particular school. Uh, we can try to do a, another school if you want to just kind of take a look at it. Let's say UC Irvine. So what I did, and I forgot to mention is that, again, this is a, a, uh, a dummy app, um, a dummy account that I created. So I just plugged in some G, a GPA and some SAT scores on it. So that's why I'm able to do this, um, you know, looking at the scattergram. Now, if the student doesn't have a test score yet, the scattergram may not come up because it is based on GPA and on, um, and on the um, SAT or ACT score. So in terms of UC Irvine, it's coming up. Um, so you see the deadline, the application fee and the acceptance rate. And again, last year, it was a tough year, 113 students applied, nine got accepted and only five enrolled. And then this is the previous year, 2021 and then 2020, 2019. And if you look um, all the way back to 2009, um, the acceptance rate was a lot bigger com compared to 2021, uh, 2022. There were 54 who applied, 30 got accepted and six you know, were enrolled. So that's that part of it. And, and so you can see the scatter grounds a little bit messy. Now this little blue icon is um, the dummy account. The purse, the the what I created, I wrote in fourteen seventy as the GPA. I mean, I'm sorry, as the SAT score and three point seven five six as the GPA. And the person is actually my dog. I named him. I I, I gave him his account. Um, Maverick. He exceeds their um, their average acceptance. Um, rate. So he's out here. But again, every year is going to be different because depending on the major that the student applies under, if it's a, a, a major that is very impacted, then they may or may not be able to get into that particular school. Um, let's see. And these are some of the other application application factors. So they're looking at character, personal qualities. For the UC applications, they do um, require what we call PIQs or personal insight questions. And so students have to write essays, you know, 250 words, they have to write four of them. They, they're given eight um, PIQs or uh, prompts and they have to write out of the eight, they just need to write four. They look at the curriculum, the rigor of the school, um, essays, extracurricular activities, GPAs, and things like that. So this is why th it's important for you to sit down with your child to kind of look this over because it does give you um, important information about the schools that you're thinking about or maybe, um, you know, just kind of doing research in, at. Okay, so let's go back to, Let me go back uh, to the home page. So that's colleges that I'm thinking about. Now, colleges that I'm applying to, that's actually a senior um, link. So I'm not going to go into that. And this one is actually the 10th grade. But again, you can look and see. Uh, we do have students um, taking certain um, surveys different during different years of their um, high school career. And in 10th grade, they do do the career and, and um, and you do a little bit of uh, college research. So they will be working on this um, in spring. And then of course there's all that scholarship and money um, link as well. This is the important to do do's and, and tasks. This is more like a calendar for students, especially when they're seniors because there's so many different deadlines they can use this to kind of plan out their deadlines if they want to do that. Um, this other uh, section over here, what's new. This is where we have our school or college visit. So you can see on the um, on Thursday to 22nd, we have Embry-Riddle coming, we have Haver Fort coming, Case Western coming. And if you hit show more, 
it'll show you the next um, few more schools we have coming on the 22nd. And then on the 26th, we have High Point, Willamette, Willamette and University of British uh, Columbia and Louisiana State, as well as Carnegie Mellon, St. Mary's. Now, some of these may be virtual visits, meaning that they're, uh, the college reps are not gonna be on campus um, during our lunchtime to um, talk with our students. They may be um, doing it virtually. So one of the things that I mentioned that parents can do is help the students or they can access the, um, uh, they can access the page where they can add colleges. Now you won't be able to register your, your child to the virtual college visits. They do have to do it themselves. So if you look on, um, let's say, I'm trying to see if there's a, a virtual visit coming up. Um, if you look at, let's say Lewis and Clark, it just, it takes you to the page. Um, it's gonna be outside the counseling center. What we have during lunchtime is kind of, we call it a mini college fair where we set up canopies tables uh, for the college representatives and they come and they talk to the students. They hand out flyers and pamphlets and things, you know, giving information about their particular school. So if students are interested in, in um, a specific school, they can go on Naviance to check with when that school is coming. Now we don't usually see, get all the schools that come because there's so many schools. In the past, we've had at least about hundred school, um, school visits, but since the pandemic, you know, our numbers have decreased, but they are slowly building up. So we're hoping to continue to have more colleges sign up and come visit our students and during lunchtime and talk with them about their school. Okay, so that's basically the front page. Um, we do have links, we have, you know, quick links to the website, the UC system, if they want, for seniors who are applying to the UCs, the CSUs, the community college. So there are quick links for the students to look, to uh, click on quickly to get to those web, um, websites. So I'm going to start with the colleges. So you can see there's a lot of things here on the colleges. Um, there's the first one is called Find Your Fit. We have um, a page called Supermatch. And what it does is it helps the students narrow down their school criteria. So if, if a student know, knows that they are not going to be happy, you know, living in the East Coast because it's just too cold. So they, then they can sort their location by state or region or by, um, you know, if they know where they want to be. So let's say, you know, a student is only interested in the West part of California, uh, United States. It gives you all the states that are on the Western part of the United States that have, you know, colleges. Um, private independent uh, state schools, community colleges as well. Do, does the student like to be in a large city, a small city, a suburb near a large city? So, you know, if, if a student knows what they want, they can click on these tabs or these criteria and then move to the next one and it, they're all actually up here. So let's say in terms of academics, what is the student looking for? Maybe the student's looking for a bachelor's degree uh, or maybe even a master's, but I guess they only let you do one first. Okay, so let's say the student's interested in a bachelor's degree in let's say biology. So they can type in biology and you can see there's different types of biology or biological um, majors. So let's say the person's interested in um, just a general biological science. And then you wanna search for all institutions that have that selected major. And then they even allows you to pick a minor if you want it a minor. So once you're done, you just move on to the next um, topic, which would be admissions. So, Remember, I put in the GPA for Maverick, which is a 3.8, and then the SAT, which is 1470. So the, the students don't have to put in their GPA because it all automatically populates it through air, from ARIES. 
uh, they do have to, if they have a test score, they do have to input it themselves. And that's, and that this will show up if they do that, um, whether it's SAT or ACT. And then you can search for colleges that have a bigger acceptance rate or a smaller acceptance rate. It's really up to each individual. So let's say I want something a little bit more open, a little more generous. If I meet their criteria, they would probably accept me. So I would, put, let's say, put 26 to 50%. You can actually select the schools with either regular decision, an early decision, uh, or rolling decision. It's up to you. Uh, and then what they accept in terms of tests. And once you're done with that, you move on to the next one, student life. So again, you know, you have diversity, you have uh, institution characteristics, you have cost, if you're, you know, thinking about cost, athletics, resources, things like that. So um, I'm going to save my search. Um, okay, let's see. What is it? Um, let's see. Um, colleges. Okay, once you save your search, Naviance will generate a list of schools, and you can see Occidental matches my criteria 100%. The average GPA is a 3.75. I'm at a 3.8, so I have a good chance of getting in. Their average SAT is 1410 minus 1470, so I have a good chance of, of getting in. Um, Reed College, which is in Portland, Oregon, I match that school 100% as well. Even though, okay, their average GPA is 3.9, I'm only at a 3.8. However, my SAT score is a little bit higher than their average SAT score. So it's a good chance that I may be able to get into this school. USC, I only match up with 90% of, of the criteria or or the match. Their average acceptance of GPA is 3.89. I'm at 3.8. Um, their average SAT is 1390. I'm at 1470. So there might be a good chance I might be able to get into that as well. So you can see it goes on and on about the different schools that I, by putting in my criteria, I narrowed it down quite a bit as to what schools I would want to uh, maybe think about applying to. And what you can also do is if you, let's say, well, I don't really know anything about this particular school. Let's say I don't know anything about University of Washington, the Seattle campus. If you click on it, it'll take you to the page of the school, and then you can do your research and read up on the school. Sorry, it just takes a little bit longer. So you can see it shows you, well, it's average net price, graduation rate, acceptance rate, um, their deadline. So, and oh, and when they're coming to visit. So on Thursday, September 22nd, they're coming to visit outside the counseling office. So I'm gonna go ahead. So for the college fair that's outside the counseling office, you don't necessarily have to register. Um, it's only the virtual business that you, uh, it's only the virtual, um, college visits that you do have to register because they send you the link because we don't have access to their links. So they will send you the link and that will allow you to um, uh, go to their college visits. So let's move to, um, so that's the college match, the super match. So let's go back to colleges. And the college events is the same as the, the first page, what I showed you in terms of the, um, oh, I'm sorry, this is a different one. So if you type in, let's say your location, it sh and let's say you can pick a date, let's say maybe um, in November, whoops, let me go back, November, September, let's say 29th to, November 4th, um, if you click on, you know, put in the criteria, it kind of shows you with the upcoming events. And obviously there's nothing that kind of matches what I'm looking for, except for um, St. Thomas University in Canada. So these are virtual events that you can look into as well under the um, 
college events. And then we went over the scattergrams a little bit, but this is just another place to look into scattergrams. The advanced college search is, um, it's pretty much the same as what we were doing earlier in terms of um, selecting certain criteria to fit the needs of the student. So let's go back to college lookup. So maybe you're, you're not sure about a particular school. You can always type it in by the name of the school um, and to do more research on it. So again, you can do it by country, by state. Um, I'm not sure what the college group is because we don't do that one, but you can also do it by alphabetical as well. So that's finding your fit. Now, the research part, I went over the college that I'm thinking about. I went over the um, college visits. Now, college compare is very um, interesting because if you go back to, if you have a list of colleges, um, let me see where's college I'm thinking about. There's a, a, a little um, tab up here where you can compare. So I have a list of colleges already on my li uh, you know, list of colleges that I'm thinking about. If I hit compare me, it shows this is me. This is my information here. University of Alabama, my GPA is not quite their, what their average GPA is, and but they also are not, um, they're also test optional. So there's no test scores here. So I don't have to worry about that. Boston University, I kind of meet the criteria here, but I don't have a PSAT score. So I, I wouldn't, so the PSAT doesn't count towards the college admission. So we don't have to worry about that. I don't have an SA, um, sorry, an ACT score, so I don't have to worry about that, but I do meet, the, meet their criteria here. And this shows you out of 434 students that applied to Boston U, 135 were accepted. And again, this is going back um, all the way to 2009. So there were four students who applied to the University of Alabama in Birmingham, Birmingham and two got, four, four um, applied and two got accepted. And this is, Cal Poly Pomona, 713 apply, 439 were accepted. And you can see, I mean, there's different areas where they would show you the data of um, the acceptance history. Like I said, this shows you, you know, where you stand in terms of the colleges. So I'm looking at University of San Diego. I don't quite meet their criteria, you know, in terms of GPA and the um, S single SAT score. So, if that's the case, maybe you might want to consider, well, you know, is it going to be a reach school if I do try to apply or is it going to be um, something that's going to be um, too far out of reach? So maybe you decide, well, maybe that's not a school that I want to apply to. So this would be a good way to decide whether the school is going to be something that's attainable as well. So uh, we did the college, that's compare college resources. So this section allows students when they are seniors to just click on the common app and it takes them to the common app page and they don't have to necessarily type in the, you know, um, they don't have to do it on the search engine. So that's, you know, this is one good thing about Naviance, all the links are put in here. There's the coalition, Common, uh, common Black College Application, Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities, if students wanna look and see which colleges are Hispanic, have Hispanic Association. Um, tribal colleges, again, there's the CSS profile, financial aid profile, it's all here, the FAFSA, the Federal Student Aid Estimator, FASTweb, which is a tool that we um, use for scholarships. Um, we always encourage the kids to really read their emails because a lot of times they do get information about um, scholarships, but they should not have to pay any money to get a list of scholarships that are offered out there. Um, again, there are so many different things here that the students can click on and it makes it very convenient for them um, to look for things. Acceptance histories, uh, we, I think we went over this a little bit. 
Unfortunately, this is not in alphabetical order. And you can see, again, this is just data. So um, you have, let's say University of Alabama, 19 apply, five got accept, five enrolled, I'm sorry. These are the acceptance and then these are the ones that were that are enrolled. So you would have to actually scroll down because it doesn't do it by alpha alphabetical order for whatever reason they just haven't done, they just don't do it. And there's no, there isn't like a little uh, area where a search area where I can just type it in. Enrichment programs. Now we don't have a lot of enrichment programs happening right now because we get more of them as, uh, as spring comes because a lot of the programs are summer programs, but these are um, programs that the organizations, the, the colleges, they send us information on. So, and then we post it up on here. So if students are interested in some type of program for the summer, this would be a good place to look at to find something that they might like. Um, college map, again, um, if you click on the first one, which is colleges that accept our students, okay, for some reason it's not showing. Oh, there it goes, it's a little bit slow. Um, and it will take a while to kind of settle in. So on the right side, you can see all the different schools that our students have been accepted to. And it just, the map just kind of shows you where they're located. and colleges where our students are attending. So that's a little bit different than they've been accepted. So these are the schools that our students have been accepted and are attending. So you can see on the right-hand side, and I don't wanna take up too much of the time to um, go through it. But again, you can actually click on these schools and they'll take you to the page of um, the, the, the school's homepage so that you can learn a little bit more about their school. And I think we did that one. So colleges I'm applying to letters of recommendation to score. That's gonna be more on the senior end. So I'm not gonna go into this because this is gonna be talked about during the senior um, Navion's next year when your students become seniors. So I think, let me just double check. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, now I think we can go ahead and take questions. I don't see the chat. So Kim, do you want to, um, if anybody's, if you raise your hand or the virtual hand, we can call on you and I can try to answer your questions. Okay, I see a hand, I think from Judy Rivera. Hi, Judy. Rivera. Hi, um, I can't seem to find um, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo on Naviance. Okay, so it, it is there. It's very tricky because even I've had had trouble finding it because it's the way it's um, because we 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 know it as Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, but it's actually University of California San Luis Obispo. So, okay. yeah, so, so they're very technical with the name of the school. So, um, yeah, you're not the only one. I've had trouble finding certain schools because I, you know, I'm, I'm so used to Cal Poly Pomona, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, but it's actually University of California, Pomona, University of California, San Luis Obispo. So you have to be very, um, I mean, you, you, you literally, you have to have the correct terminology. Otherwise it won't pop up. It's just the way Naviance is. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I think Karen Kaplan also has a question. Hi, hey, Karen. Yeah, hi, thanks very much. Um, when you were showing all those UCs as examples and their GPAs, are those weighted GPAs or are they straight for, like what should we be, our kids be putting in so that they're getting a fair comparison to yeah. whatever UC thinks is their GPA? Right. So our school does not have, um, we don't weigh our GPA. So whatever their, the student's GPA is on, on their transcript is what gets transferred over to, to Naviance. So the, the, the funny thing about the UCs and the Cal States is that 
they do give the students um, eight extra points if they took at least four honors or AP courses. So they do their own calculation when the students apply to the UCs and Cal State. So it, yeah, you're right. It's not gonna be a fair comparison in terms of the GPA on the scattergram because we're not a weighted school. So our, the GPA is gonna be a little bit lower than when the students apply to the UCs and Cal States. Um, their GPA is gonna be a little bit higher because they do get that four extra bump. Does that only affect the uh, Cal States and the UCs or does that affect a lot of other colleges too? The private independent colleges, they have their own calculator and they do their own, um, they do their own um, weighing of, the, of, their, of the APs and honors, uh, but they don't usually have a calculator to let the students know what their weighted GPA is. It's kind of like um, in-house. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Does anybody else have any questions? You can raise your virtual hand. Okay, Kate Wilson. Hi, yes, I was just wondering if you were um, interested in taking the practice ACT or SAT, where do you sign up for that? Uh, we have a company, there, there is a company, not we have a company, there is a company called Revolution Prep. In the past, they've come to our school on Saturdays to do um, a mock SAT, a mock um, ACT. I haven't heard anything about them coming back to our school to do this um, recently. So um, there are some test prep companies on our school's website that I can look into, but in terms of re um, referring you to one, we don't really refer uh, students to the companies because you know it is a paid organization, a paid company. So it's whatever you feel comfortable, that's a good fit for your child. Um, but yeah, we do have some companies that are on the school's website in case parents do want to utilize their um, services. Thank you. So the one that um, the school has been speaking about, is that just the actual ACT and SAT test? No, they're actually what we call mock ACT, SAT. So what they do is um, students, and this is speaking from you know past experience, students come in on Saturdays and they take the exam, takes three, four hours. It's a shortened version of the exam and they um, correct the exam and they let you know or let the student know um, if you were taking the actual test, your score will be roughly this or and they would let you know what um, areas would work you know, that you need to improve in or what areas that you're, you're strong in and maybe you need to focus on this part to you know, get your score a little bit higher. So they do have, um, yeah, that's, that's, it's called Revolution Prep. And I think they are on, also on our school's website. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there other questions? I have one. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, what is, I, it's been a long time since I've been in this realm. The difference between SAT and ACT, if you can explain. Um, at this point, there's really not much of a difference except ACT has a science portion. Um, it used to be the, the ACT was an exam that um, tested what you learn in high school, whereas the SAT was kind of a very broad type of um, exam and, and, we've, and students did much better on the ACT. So, and students were not penalized for guessing on the ACT. Whereas the SAT in the past, students were penalized for guessing. So what SAT did was they saw that they were losing a lot of um, business, people going to the ACT instead of SAT. So they kind of aligned their um, exam very similar to the ACT. So now if a student were to guess on the SAT, they will not be penalized. But the only difference at this point is just there's a science component to the ACT 
and so, the SAT does not have a science component. But again, you have the English and your math portion. So if a student, let's say a student really wanted to study biology or pre-med, the ACT would be the better exam? Yeah, be, yes, it would be because the um, SAT no longer offers a subject test. Hmm. Okay, okay, that, that clears it up. And like a school like an MIT, for example, may very well require the ACT. Yes, they got do. it. I okay. would I would definitely um, look at the school look at the schools. I know, um, like I said in, in earlier, the um, colleges for this graduating class are still test optional. But for the juniors, um, I haven't heard anything. Um, they have we haven't you know colleges haven't sent us anything in terms of you know whether they're going back to accepting the test as part of the admissions. Um, process or not, but I would think, and I would, um, I mean, I would almost guess that it would be a good idea to at least take one in the spring. Of, mm, of course. Yeah. Okay. That clears it up. Thanks very much. You're welcome. I have a question. Sure. How involved should we as parents be with Naviance, like what is there anything that we should be looking out for encouraging our students to do how you know using this, then, this then, app like what can we do I think the most important thing to do is you know start having that dialogue with your child about college um you know colleges and look at the different colleges not just in California, but just across the United States, because there's so many really good colleges and some colleges outside of California, out of state schools, they give really good um, financial aid packets to our students. So you have to understand, you know, uh, with the different majors, they're gonna get very similar educations outside of California and the California schools are very, very impacted. And we, you know, that's not to say that students cannot get into the Cal States or the UCs or, or even some of the privates in California. It's just that the competition is so fierce that, you know, I, I think it, it's probably more, not, not, not just practical, but I think it's important to just kind of open up the, you know, open up the, um, the doors and, and look at different places outside of California and um, to, you know, just to sit down and do some research. You know, there are some, some really great schools out there. Um, maybe your child likes to go skiing. Maybe they might wanna go to a school in Colorado, <laughs> you know, or, or maybe somewhere in the East Coast where they have a lot of snow. Um, you know, that's something to think about. But yeah, definitely have, sit down with your, with your child, go through Naviance, do some research, put in some of those schools that you may be thinking about or, or he or she may be thinking about. Um, but it doesn't mean that they're gonna be applying to these schools in their senior year. I mean, it's just something that they're thinking about. I mean, it could be something that they're gonna be applying down the road, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I do have another question, and I suspect there's several parents who are thinking about it. Uh, we over here, and I'm sure many other people have it as well, we've been receiving, let's call them advertisements from, from organizations that describe themselves as application consultants, mm -hmm. people who claim that they are helping, they have you know counselors and consultants to help with the application process and the their success rate and the acceptance rate of their clients is far beyond that of mortal men. Mm -hmm. uh, you as a school counselor, I imagine, have some opinion of this. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. It That is up to the parents, up to the family. But it, to be frank, these consultants are not the ones writing letters of recommendations for your child. Yeah, um, I want you to be frank. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and they, they are doing similar things that Naviance can do for you. Okay, you know, that's what I say, figured. Oh, your child with the GPA and, and the rigor of, of, of the um, courses and the SAT ACC score, I think your child should be applying to 
UCLA, um, USC, Occidental. Navians can tell you that same thing. That's good advice. I mean, I, I figured as much, but you know, it's a, it's the kind of thing we get one of the about one every month, and yeah. of course they claim that you know the acceptance rate of their clients is you know fifty percent higher, whatever it is. Yeah. Well, but no, I figured. It, yeah, and hmm. I'll be honest with you, your child get your your child's the one who gets themselves into these schools. It's mm-hmm. not. I mean, the counselors, you know, we support the students, but I can't say that I'm the one who got this person into Berkeley because I didn't write the PIQs. I didn't write, you know, I may have gone over the the PIQs with them and making sure that their their essays on the right track and it's Mm -hmm. answering the prompt Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, I'm not the one who gave them the GPA. They earned their GPA. So, I mean, again, it's it's up to the parents. It's not... um, it's just a preference that parents feel that they can, you know. Um, I appreciate that you're trying to be diplomatic, <laughs> <laughs> but just in your experience, you haven't necessarily noticed a bump with these for-profit companies being involved. No, because I can probably tell you the same schools where your child would be able to get accepted to, and that would actually be a good rate on my end mm-hmm. that your child got accepted to all. 20 schools that he applied to, right? Or they apply to. If they fall within the parameters that, yeah. I assumed it was something like that, but I I figured, my wife and I figured we better ask. (laughs) Okay. Thank thank you for (laughs) trying to be (laughs) diplomatic about it. You're welcome. And I I don't know if I mentioned this is being recorded. So I I don't know if some of your faces will be on, um, but what we can do is maybe we can cut off the question part of it um, because I, Maybe I forgot to mention that it's being recorded. Um, any other you, questions? You did. That's fine. Okay. I have a question. Yes. I uh, was concerned that um, I think the counseling staff is one short right now, and mm-hmm. with letter recommendations, um, you know, like the kids probably starting to build relationships with their counselors. I'm just concerned that um, you know you, you guys have extra students. The normal and um, how would you get to know the students well enough that in their senior year um, you could comfortably um, write that letter of recommendation for that student? So what the counselors do um, during the senior year is that we ask students to, um, we have questions that we ask students so, so that we can get to know them in a more, in a deeper level. Than, than what we already know with the, you know about the student. And then we also interview the students. So we kind of go over the questions. We try to get more information from the students. Like there are things that you know, students may do outside of school that we may not be aware of. And so we do have those interviews with them and just kind of um, have the kids highlight you know, some of the things that they've done and you know, what's so spectacular about those things. So you know, we are pulling as much information as we can from the students in order to write a um, comprehensive letter of recommendation for the stu- you know for the students to the colleges that they're uh, applying to. So just to follow up, so then you will have an interview with the student with every every say senior coming through will have an interview with the counselor. Only the, well, we would only. Uh, inter- we only interview the students who are interested in um, applying to the private independent college and some out-of-state schools because the UCs and the Cal States do not require letters of recommendation. And if students who are interested in maybe just going to PCC first and transferring, obviously we're not going to have an interview with, um, with them. But if they're applying to, let's say, um, you know, MIT, Harvard, some of like UW, um, any schools that that requires a letter of recommendation, we would sit down with them and take about 45 to an 45 minutes to an hour to, um, you know, get as much information, get clear clarification of certain things that they may have done, um, you know, clubs that they're in, just, you know, holistically, that's what we would do. You know, we want to look at the child holistically, since teachers are, are the ones working on their letter of rec in terms of, you um, you know, academics, the counselors do it more on the holistic level. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Uh, just to follow up on that, do you expect the counseling staff to be back at full strength next year? We, uh, we're hoping by next semester. Okay. Yeah, mm. we're hoping by next semester. It's, it's good to know. Thanks. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Okay, it is five minutes to eight. So if there aren't any more questions, I am going to stop recording and then I'm gonna end the um, meeting. I really appreciate everyone coming this, after, this evening. I know you guys are busy with work and, and um, you know, kids and everything. So um, thank you all for coming. And this will be posted up on our school's website, hopefully by the end of the week, if you need to go back and just kind of, um, you know, take a refresher course of it. It's, it's very, honestly, it's very um, easy. Just go in there and kind of play around with your Naviance, with your, you know, just kind of navigate. That's what I encourage all the kids to do. Just go ahead and go in there and navigate. And you'll find that it's not that difficult. Yes, I have a quick question. I just wondered what percentage of the students, I mean, just approximately end up going to community college. Oh, good question, because we just did the school profile on that. So last year we had about 25% of our students attend um, Pasadena C or a city college. I shouldn't say just Pasadena City College. And, um, and honestly, there are some students who could have gone to a four year, but they chose not to for financial reasons or they just did not get into the school that they really wanted to get into. So they chose a different path. And to go from a community college to a, um, and transfer into a four year, the opportunity is actually a lot better um, because you're not competing with a large number of students. Um, the community colleges have in agreement with the four-year universities where there's a certain number of slots they, they reserve for transfer students. So it, let's say a student um, has a 3.8 and, um, and that's what's required to get into, let's say UC Irvine. Um, a transfer student may not need a 3.8, they may need a 3.5 grade point average to get into UC Irvine and they won't need a test score to get into that school. They just have to demonstrate that they, they did well the first couple of years or whatever the transfer um, courses that they, they're taking at a community college, as long as they do well, you know, colleges have, uh, community colleges have agreements with certain four-year universities. So as long as you follow those courses and you do well in those courses, you're pretty much a shoe in to get into those four-year universities. And, and just as a follow up to that, um, thank you for that answer. I, I also wondered, just out of curiosity, how many, what's the percentage of students last year that did not go on to, to any kind of higher ed? Uh, we had a few who took gap years or who went into the workforce. Uh, we don't have the exact percentage, um, but I know maybe, I wanna say, at least 10 to 12 students may have either gone into the workforce or took uh, or ended up taking a gap year. Okay. All right, thank you everyone. Oh, there's one more, Tracy. Yes, uh, I, just to follow up to what the lady was just asking right before me, do you have any statistics on like if they go to uh, city college, like, what the chances are, or is there any uh, difference in scholarship opportunities if you go as a transfer as opposed to going right from high school to a so, four-year? Yeah, the, the, because, well, if they go from a community college and then transfer into a four-year, we wouldn't have the statistics and we wouldn't have the uh, scholarship opportunity because it would be at the community college level, or it would be at the college, you know, the four-year university level where they would offer the scholarships. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I'm going to stop recording and I am going to end this uh, meeting. Thank you so much for coming out. I hope this was informative. Um, like thank I, you. You're welcome. I, like I said, this is going to be posted up onto our school's website under junior, under counseling and academics and under juniors.
Thank 